crazy. I'm crazy for sewing this quilt block. A little bit off key, just a little bit off key. So here we go with another block in our scraps, strips, strings, and crumbs series. Thus far, we have done traditional blocks using strings and crumbs. We've also made some applique with our crumbs and strings. But now it's time to look at blocks that are traditionally scrappy. And we're going to start with one of my personal favorites, a crazy block. Somehow I just feel like a crazy block just perfectly describes me. I love crazy quilts. I see them often at various quilt shows and I will run towards them to get a closer look. I feel as though crazy blocks are like the um, original crumb block because, well, they're just random pieces of scrap fabrics that got sewn together. But there's one big difference between a crumb block and a crazy block, and that is the embellishments. You see, usually crazy blocks are just, again, random pieces of fabric that are sewn together, but they're embellished with some embroidery stitches. Sometimes they got some beadwork in there. They have maybe trinkets that get sewn into the block. And well, sometimes people just put embroidery pieces that are left over from other projects and they throw it onto a crazy quilt block. Just a jumbled up ball of crazy, scrappy, quilty sewing stuff. So, you know, I had to incorporate a crazy block into our scrappy sew along. Over the years, I've learned that there are various techniques and methods of creating a crazy block from paper piecing, or maybe even using die cuts. Well, as for myself, I like to just sew random pieces of fabric together without the assistance of a die cut or a paper piecing pattern. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate to you some techniques that I use when I create crazy blocks. Now, that is not to say that this is the definitive way of making a crazy block, although it probably will drive you crazy sewing these blocks. First, we're going to sew the blocks together, and then later on, we'll get to the embellishments. So let's get these blocks started. So to make these crazy blocks, well, pull out everything in your scrap arsenal. That's your scraps, your strings, your strips, your crumbs. Pull all of that out and let's see what we got, because we're probably going to use all of it. So I got my string collection here, and I'm not going to dump this out, but I got my scrap collection here. So these, these are some of the larger scrap pieces that I got. Maybe I can use some of them and just sew them together. Then I got my cr tiny crumbs that I started maybe, or I started to sew the block together. But hey, I might just use some of that and put that together in a crazy block. Now, before we get started constructing our crazy blocks, let me offer this tip to you because I know there are some of you out there that have an issue with just sewing random scrap fabrics together, or in other words, creating a crumb block. I used to be one of you. When I first started quilting, I had a very hard time with scrappy. I mean, things needed to be in a certain order and it had to follow the certain pattern. I mean, in my mind, I was very narrow and straight minded. I wanted to conquer that fear. So I asked some friends or some quilting friends of how to break that. And one of them gave me this tip, which I'm going to pass on to you. So here I have a crumb block that I started and I want to add on to this block. I have a small bin of crumbs here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to close or blindfold myself, reach into the bin, and just pick out a fabric. Okay, no matter what, no matter what fabric you pick out, you have to sew it on to the crumb block or sew it on. 
that's how I actually conquered my inhibitions about sewing random fabrics together. So give that a try. Now, again, there is one rule. Just close your eyes, reach into the bin, or reach into your pile, and whatever fabric you pull out, that's the one you sew. So here it is, the new piece is sewed on, and we'll just, again, close my eyes. I'm gonna reach in, and this one. Ooh, I got another crumb block that was mixed in here. Oh well, this is the one I pulled out, this is the one I gotta sew. Ah, uh, wait, I don't wanna sew this one. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. remember the rule. No matter what fabric you pick out, you have to sew it. Who are you? Sew it. Sew it. I don't want to sew this one, though. It's already a crumbler. Sew it. Ah. Okay, 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 okay. Jeez. Why do I feel like Sam Kinison doing that? Hey. Not bad. And then when you get awkward shapes like this, take the ruler and slice it. Oh. Oh, forgot that little piece there. Now I can find or I can start sewing on the straight edge there. Or I could just trim this side and create another straight edge there and sew another piece. One more piece. Yeah. Yep, that's the one. See, now we can see that our crumb block, or perhaps maybe even our crazy block, is taking shape. So with that said, let's get started sewing using our first technique. So this first technique that I'm going to show, well, this is what people call the stitch and flip method, but I tend to call it the stitch and flip and kind of log cabin -y technique because the final block kind of looks like a log cabin to me. Let's have a look at this. So to start off, we're going to start with the center piece. Now here I just chose, or I just chose a piece of uh, crumb block that I got started and it's a pretty good size. The idea with this technique is you start off with some kind of a centerpiece that has at least five different sides. You can do more if you want to, but you don't want exactly a square or some kind of rectangle shape with only four sides. You do want to have different angles here. Here I have this shape. Um, I might trim it down. Well, I definitely do need to trim this down to kind of straighten out the edges, but notice as I do that, I'm not exactly going at a right angle. I can create different shapes or different angles with this. So I might do, yeah, let's go this way. And start off with a shape that's, well, not your typical square. So here we got one, two, three, four, five sides to that. And just let the block grow organically this way. Now, what we're going to do with this block is we're going to lay a strip. We're gonna sew it here. We're gonna flip it back. Then we'll turn it. We'll grab another strip or a string, whichever you prefer to do. We'll sew it here, flip it back. And we're gonna keep going around and around and around, sort of like how you would build a log cabin. I got my pile of strings here. I'm just gonna be using strings. You can use strips, two and a half, one and a half, whatever size strips you want. And let's just get sewing. I'm just gonna finger press this back. I got that piece sewn on. I'm gonna finger press it back. Let your strip overhang by a lot because when you trim this, you are eventually gonna trim this down and you wanna make sure that in certain spots you have enough of the fabric so that it extends all the way out. So let's, Trim this part, make a line here. 
Take that off. And we can go with this line here. I need a larger ruler. And I'm just gonna line it up. Trim it down. Then we can start with another piece alongside here. So I'm gonna go with, ooh, uh, let's see, ooh, this green. And notice that the size of each of these strips or each of these strings, I mean, they're varying sizes, so it doesn't have to be equal. I'm just gonna lay it on top of there. And now we sew. I should mention this. If you are going to use this technique, it might be a good idea to have some type of leader and ender project that you want to sew on the side. Because I don't have a thread cutter on this machine, I'm going to need some kind of leader and ender project. So I'm going to I'm going to sew on this strip paper strip here and create a crumb strip block. And is that long enough? Yep. So let's sew this. Okay, so I have a leader and ender project just so that every time or in between all of the strips that I sew on this particular block, I have something to sew off on. And this is a great idea or something that you might wanna do is, especially if your machine does not have an automatic thread cutter, it's a good way to kind of save the thread as well as chain stitch something else on. I'm gonna sew this brown piece on. So let's get sewing. Okay, so got my actual block sewn on. Oop, great piece there. Now I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna just continue that, trim it down. And I can put this piece back in my pile. I'll tr trim this side down. And I'll trim this side down. Okay. We'll do one side here. So for that, I will choose this. Ooh, I love this fabric. Ha ha. You can go ahead and trim some of the strips or strings, whatever you're using. You can trim it down. Just make sure that um, depending upon the angle, you might want to have it overhang a few inches, about an inch or two. Okay, so we'll flip this one back. Okay, so here's a troublesome spot because you see here, I have this hole right there. Now, I could do one of two things. I could take a ruler and trim it down this way, or I could just take a ruler and just make a fresh cut and eliminate these this pieces here. And in fact, I think that's what I'm gonna do. And what that does then is it creates another edge right here where I can actually add more strips to it. And these pieces, if they're large enough, they're gonna go in my crumb bin. I'm just gonna trim it up here. And don't worry, when we get all of this sewn, we're gonna press this block so that it's flat. Right now it's a little bit wonky and I'm fine with it. I'm gonna sew on one more strip and we're gonna start speeding up the video because I don't think you wanna, I think you kinda get the idea of it. Basically you start with some center piece and then you just sew strips or strings all around and keep going around and around and around and around until you get a block that is about the size that you need. Now for our purposes, we want a 12 and a half inch block because that's the size of blocks that we have been making for this series. But you do you, if you wanna make it smaller, you wanna make it larger, that's your decision to make. But let's go ahead and get this block done.
So I got this stitch and flip or kind of a log cabin-y look block done. Let's have a look. So I started with this crumb piece as my center. Now, if you don't have a crumb piece, you could actually start with some uh, solid piece of fabric or maybe a print that you like. You could put it in the center and then start sewing around it. Just make sure that your whatever you start off with as your centerpiece doesn't look so square. Um, just cut the corners off a little bit and then you can start sewing your strips. Starting with that centerpiece there, you just sew strips all around it, just as though you were putting together some log cabin quilt block. Now, eventually it, the pieces got so long that well, I just started sewing some other pieces. So like this piece here, this was actually part of my paper piece strings. So I just decided, okay, I'm gonna put it in that block. As I was trimming the blocks down, if the pieces were large enough, I put it in a separate corner. So this piece here is actually the same as this piece. It was large enough and I just used it there. So there you have it. Do know this though, to put this block together, especially, well, because I use some smaller and thinner strips, it does take a while to put this one together. So take your time, have fun with it, be creative with it. Again, you can use your orphan blocks. If you don't like the block, well, cut it in half and just make it into a crumb to start with your center. So let's get on to the next technique. As some of you already know, I love to do some mindless sewing and spend time sewing crumb pieces together. Most of the time, I sew a bunch of crumbs together, then trim them down to make four and a half inch squares. But from time to time, I will take some of those sewn crumb pieces and make crazy blocks with them. Usually I have a stash of crumb pieces that I started, I will start sewing each of those crumb pieces together to make larger crumb pieces. Sometimes I may have a straight edge that are kind of straight, so I just sew those pieces together. Other times I have to cut a straight edge on one of the sides, then sew the two crumb pieces together. I usually will press these seam allowances open to spread the bulk. Then I'll grab another two crumb pieces, straighten one of the sides if I need to, and then sew them together. From time to time, I don't like how things are developing, or I start noticing that it kind of looks like I'm just sewing a bunch of squares together, and I don't see any weird angles or weird shapes. When that starts to happen, I will cut the crumb piece into smaller pieces at weird angles and start building it up again. Just like the tip I gave earlier, release your inhibitions. Don't think about it, just cut and sew. Eventually the crumb pieces will get so big that you can't find other crumb pieces that are long enough to sew together. Now at that point, I start digging into my strings or larger scraps to sew on. And if a string or scrap piece is too thick or too large, I will trim the piece down and move on. Personally, I like to have those larger strings or larger scrap pieces towards the edge of the block. This way, I know that all of the smaller crumb pieces are in the center of the block, and it will cut down on the extra bulk when I start sewing the blocks into rows and start putting the quilt top together. Once it's large enough, I will trim it down to size and give it a final press. All right, so I got a block that's 12 and a half inches and I squared it up. So let's have a look at it. So here, we started off just sewing random crumbs together. And then as the pieces got bigger and bigger, well, that's when I dipped into my larger scrap bin and came up with these strips and sewed it around. Now, one thing about this particular method is it's a combination of scraps and crumbs being sewn together or you could use strips if you don't have larger scraps. I like this technique because number one, it's pretty quick and it's pretty fast. And number two, it's very easy to do. 
But most of all, I like this technique because you don't get that log cabin kind of look to it. I mean, it does look like it's very random. One thing I will note is, see here and here, as well as these two fabrics, well, they're the same fabric. One of the big things about this technique is the more fabrics or the more different fabrics you throw into this quilt block, well, the better it looks, actually. Now, I don't mind having the same fabrics within the same quilt block. I mean, I just want to use up the fabrics and use up all the crumb pieces or the strings or strips or whatever I got. Now, you might not have a big stash of scrap fabrics. That's perfectly fine. If you have a repeating fabric, it's really up to you if you want to put it in or leave it out. I just, I tend to just put it in there because, well, I don't know. I don't have a problem with it, but I do know that some scrappy quilters have a problem with that. This will be a little interesting because here's the crumb version and here is the log cabin -y version. Both of these started off with crumb blocks. The log cabin, we just sewed random strings across. Well, this version, I just sewed crumb pieces together and then as they got larger, that's when I started sewing the strips or the larger scraps around. But they don't look the same. However, they look very, very scrappy and very crazy. So these are the two techniques that I usually use. Mm. Kale and coconut milk. That's my magic elixir for today. Not bad. Oh, and a little bit of Greek yogurt. Not bad. You know, I was reading a book once that made a connection between your emotions, your life, and how you create. Whether you're an artist, whether you're a card maker, whether you're a quilter, any kind of creation that you do, or even if you're not a creator, um, how you are or how you behave at your workplace, how you behave just in life, whether you realize it or not, your emotions sort of... Um, exude or kind of show up in those type of situations. Case in point, well, the example that I was reading in this book was that when, you feeling, when you're feeling sad or if you feel down, you might kind of unconsciously choose colors that are darker in nature, maybe darker blues or darker grays, something that kind of comes out depressing. But when you're happy, when you're bright, you're cheerful, you're in a good mood, well, sometimes you might choose colors that are brighter in nature, more on the warmer side. So maybe like your reds, your oranges, your yellows. And I kind of feel like that it, there's a lot of truth to that. Because how you create or what you create, the color choices, the style that you do, it's pretty much a reflective sign of what your lifestyle is. Case in point, one of the big reasons why I like this crazy block is because, well, my life really is crazy. Which is precisely why I say this block matches me. For people that like to have certain things in order, they have to have organization, you can kind of tell in their quilting or the type of quilt patterns that they like. Um, everything has to be the same. Everything has to fit perfectly. Everything has to be exactly alike. And they can't handle random. That used to be me. But then my life just went crazy. Henceforth, a crazy block. I do know some people, I mean, I work in the financial industry, and I do know some people that are very square. Everything has to fit in some compartment or a box. And that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But for me, I mean, this is me passing judgment on that, but it seems a little boring. I like color. I like to be different. I like to just not be the same, not be square. That's just me. And if you don't know that by now, by watching some of these videos, well, you'll get to know that really fast. Again, not passing judgment. I tend to think that if it's all square, it's kind of boring. 
So it brings me to this one question. If there was a quilt block that mimicked your personality, what would it be? Would it be a star because you want attention? Would it be a pinwheel because you feel like your life is just going around in circles? Would it be a crazy quilt because your life is just crazy like me? Would it be a strip quilt because different pieces of your life come together to make one beautiful thing? Ooh, I like that one, huh? <laughs> Give that some thought. And when you finally come up with your answer, put a comment down below. Let everybody know. And let's all share what quilt block would represent us. You know, this really isn't bad. It just sounds horrible, but you know, with the coconut milk and the Greek yogurt, not bad. All right, so we have our quilt blocks. Now comes the fun part when we start embellishing. So let me get out my brother's sewing machine and we're gonna do some decorative stitches on these quilt blocks. So I'll be right back. So I quickly set up my brother's sewing machine, which has about 60 or so decorative stitches. I randomly selected a stitch and just started sewing. Although I did stitch over the seams, I didn't pay much attention to sewing directly on or over the seams. If it went a little crooked, well, I didn't let it bother me. You don't necessarily have to stitch over the seams. You can place the stitches anywhere, really. But traditionally, the stitches are done over the seams because in the past, that is how the fabric pieces were sewn together. But make it your own and do what you want with it. One word of caution, if you are sewing over your seams, be aware of how bulky the seam allowances are. At some spots, this brother machine had a little bit of trouble and the threads would often break or the machine would just stop. Another reason why I tend to press my seam allowances open when I sew crumbs together. So I'm done with my decorative stitches and, well, let's take a look at one of the blocks. So this is the log cabin version of the block. And you can kind of see here that I just chose whatever decorative stitch that was on the machine and just put it right there on the seam. You don't necessarily have to do a decorative stitch on the seam. You can do it anywhere on the block, really. And don't worry if the stitch didn't come out perfect. I mean, Really, this is just a crazy block. The imperfections is what makes it crazy, so just leave it in there. Notice here that my machine got a little stuck there because the seam was so bulky that it couldn't go over it, so that little arch was a little shorter than the rest, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Notice that I did play with the thread color, so I do have this brownish gold thread. I also used a red thread here. Have fun. Use those decorative stitches that are on your machine for once. <laughs> now don't forget, there's another aspect of the embellishing of a crazy quilt block, and that is the little trinkets that get sewn onto the block. So let's have a look at some of the things that I pulled from my stash to put on this block. This is actually a keychain that was made out of beads. I think I might actually put this, or one of these, I got two of them here. Uh, I might actually sew this onto one of the quilt blocks. I also do have this pin with the turtle. I think turtles are my spirit animal because I tend to be attracted to them on these little trinkets like this. These little earrings or sewing notions, they're actually, okay, they're actually earrings that you're supposed to wear, but I'm gonna just somehow attach it onto this quilt block. I should mention that I will be attaching all of these embellishments and trinkets after the entire quilt has been quilted. This is because you don't want to have these things get in the way while you are quilting the quilt. And if you send your quilts to a long armor, well, they will thank you for that. But you know, if you don't have any earrings or little trinket things, you can also do buttons. You could just do embroidery blocks. 
um, you know, just be creative with whatever you got in your creative stash. Maybe you got beads that you can just sew onto there. Again, the sky's the limit. You're only limited with your creativity. So look around your sewing room, look around your craft room, see what things that, see or see what little trinkets you got stashed away somewhere that you might not use on another project. Hey, just put it on this quilt block. Now, if you've been following along with this series, well, every quilt block or every block that we've done, I've done a giveaway. In this video, here's the giveaway. So now with the rulers and these pair of scissors, I mean, again, they're earrings, but I'm gonna find some way to actually use it as a trinket and sew it on this quilt block. But here's the thing. I actually bought two pairs of each. So this month's giveaway, I'm gonna give away a pair of these rulers and these earrings so that you can include it on your crazy quilt block, should you choose to, or maybe you can just wear it. Here's how to enter the giveaway. First of all, you have to be a member of the Treasure Heart Creations Facebook group. And, well, make a crazy quilt block for yourself. Can be of any size, could be any style that you want. Post a picture of your quilt block to the Treasure Heart Creations Facebook group. Now, all posts must be done by October 29th, 2023. Then on October 31st, on the Treasure Heart Creations Live on a Tuesday night, we will be announcing the winner of the giveaway. And should you choose to do more than one crazy quilt block, well, each crazy quilt block picture that you post, that gives you an entry into the giveaway. So good luck, let's get sewing. So remember to answer this one question and put a comment down below. What quilt block would represent you and your lifestyle. Put a comment down below. Let us all know what quilt block you feel like represents you the best. For me, it was the crazy quilt block. And I enjoyed this because of the random scrappiness and craziness, which sometimes is my life. If you haven't had a chance to start your scrap, strips, strings, and crumbs adventure, well, Check out this playlist right now and let's get you started. Well, until next time, let's all go out there and let's create something. Mm -hmm.